Welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel, brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. This is week one of the spring knit along, and you're going to learn how to make the My First Knit Sweater with Marley Bird. Last year we did knit socks and you guys did so great making those socks. And many of you said, okay Marley, I've tackled my fear of socks, it's time to make a sweater. And I said, okay, let's do this. So when I sat down to design the sweater, it's the one that's right here behind me, I literally designed it with you in mind. I wanted to make sure that it was fashionable, it was on trend, but it was also able to um, lend itself to teaching you new skills, keeping you intrigued, and hopefully end up with a product that you love as much as you loved your socks. I love this sweater and I made the sweater using Red Heart's Huga Charm. It's a new yarn that's on the market. It's an affordable acrylic yarn that has a little bit of sparkle to it. Not so much so that you feel like you're glamming it out, but just has a little hint of something. And I thought it just was perfect for a sweater for this time of year. It's not going to be too hot. It's not going to be too warm. And I just thought maybe it would be really great. Plus it comes in some really great colors. I have a couple of awesome colors colors right here. I don't have all of them, but I grabbed quite a few. <laughs> so as you can see, there are many colors for you to choose from. There is a link to the yarn in the video description box right down there below. If you want to go check out the yarn over at redheart.com, while you're down there, go ahead and smash that like button as my kids say. Along with this yarn, uh, I wanted to make sure that it was a sweater that you could accomplish in a reasonable time frame. So even though it is an oversized sweater, I didn't add a whole bunch of extra stitches to it in the sense of the majority of the sweater is in stockinette. So you don't have to worry too much about learning pattern stitches. We do a majority of the sweater in stockinette stitch, making it easier for you to accomplish and it kind of becomes easy breezy, sit in front of your TV knitting, okay? So I tried to keep all of that in mind. Last but not least, I did want to keep in mind that I wanted a broad size range. I know that many of us out here as we're knitting items to fit ourselves, not all of us are a size small and not all of us are a size 4X, but I wanted to make sure there was a sweater that I could design that would be good for all of those sizes because I myself, I am a 2X, so I want to make sure that I design a sweater that I can wear, right? So all of that together is what I went into designing the sweater. And then I just wanted to keep it simple. I didn't wanna do a whole lot of shaping because I didn't wanna uh, cloud the situation of a sweater making with that. I wanted to keep it very simple. So hence we have the My First Knit Sweater. I'm excited to make this sweater, and this is a knit along, and so for those of you who don't know, we will release one section of the pattern each week for six weeks. At the end of the knit along, Red Heart will put up a free PDF on their website of the pattern in full. So for the first six weeks, it'll be on my website, and after that too, it's always on my website. But each week you will go to the website and you will get that week's instructions for the sweater pattern. After the entire knit along is complete, Red Heart puts the sweater pattern up on their website. So you'll be able to get the full pattern in PDF format off of the Red Heart website after the knit along is complete, okay? Another thing to know about the knit along is that we have a specific Facebook group dedicated to the knit along. This group is a long running group. We started it with the very first knit along and each knit along we just keep um, adding on to the knit along group. So you'll see things posted in there from two years ago, from last year, from three years ago. Now we're starting our fourth year. This is our fourth knit along, you guys. Can you believe it? It's our fourth one. I'm so, I'm so happy. I'm so happy we're doing this. Um, this knit along group is extremely supportive, very helpful, and it's a place where you can go to post your pictures so that you have a chance to win prizes. Because during the knit along, there are prizes that are offered each week, so that way you're um, enticed to complete that homework for the week and you have a chance to win prizes from Red Heart. So if you are not part of the Facebook group, I highly encourage you to do so, okay? So where do you find all of this information? Well, it's all on my website. Down there in the video description box where I told you there was a link to the yarn, there's also a link to my website, which will give you the full details of everything you need to know about the knit along, as well as a link to the pattern for each week as it's released. 
you will always go back to this singular page and find that week's instructions. So it'll be week one, you go to this page, you find the instructions for week one, click it, or click the link, and it'll take you to the instructions for week one. Week two, you go back to this page, find the, find the link for week two, click it, it'll take you to week two, so on and so forth. Does that make sense? That's how we run the knit along during the knit along. Once again, as I mentioned, after the knit along, you can always just get a PDF and follow along with that. And it'll be available at redheart.com. And we'll be sure to put a link to that in the um, Marley Bird blog post as well. Okay, so I know that's a whole lot here at the start, but um, now you know what to expect here with the knit along and we're gonna get started with week one. So let's go ahead um, and jump right on in. If you're ready, I'm ready. I don't know about you guys, but I am so excited to get started with this knit along and I cannot wait to see all of your finished sweaters on you. All right, let's go ahead and begin by choosing the right size for you. I've printed off the first couple uh, instructions that I have on my website and what you're gonna notice here is that there is a two fit size and a finished size. Now you might be saying, what does that mean? What's the difference between those two sizes? And that's what I want you to know now. I designed this sweater to be oversized. What that means is it has 10 inches of positive ease. Now what does ease mean? Ease is simply the difference between the measurement of your body and the measurement of the sweater. So if my body is 52 inch bust and the sweater is a 62 inch bust, then I have 10 inches of positive ease. Makes sense, pretty simple. It's just the difference between where your body stops and your sweater starts, okay? It's all that extra room. So I designed this sweater to have that extra amount of ease. Okay, so let's take a look at this sweater back here. I'm gonna bring it up here a little bit. This is the sample sweater. And this sweater is on a mannequin with a 34 inch bust. And this is the size medium sweater. So it's a 44 inch sweater. You can see how much room it has all around the sweater as far as the amount of fabric that's on the sweater, right? It doesn't look like it's too overly big, but it definitely is not like super, tight against the body, right? It's not like that. You definitely have some wiggle room and some space. It's nice because the model that modeled this sweater was also a size 34 inch bust. So you can see how this sweater fits her with that 10 inches of ease. If you are comfortable with the 10 inches of ease, then it's gonna be as easy as choosing what size fit size works for you. So I mentioned earlier, I'm a size 2X. And so if I were to go to the fit size and find the size 2X, I can see that it's the one, two, three, fourth number inside the parentheses. And I can come down here and I can go one, two, three, fourth number inside the parentheses. And I can say, okay, my 2X, I know that I, I know that I am a 52 inch bust, okay? And if this 2X size is a 59 inch bust, minus 52, that, e that means that it's a seven inch difference, okay? So I'm not getting the full 10 inches there, I'm getting a seven inch. But I don't wanna go up to the 64 because that means I'm gonna have 12 inches. I don't really want 12 inches. So I am gonna go ahead and stick with the 2X and 59. The reason I'm able to, to kind of have all that wiggle room with the numbers, especially with this pattern, is because it's a drop shoulder and it's meant to be oversized. I don't need to worry about fitting any sort of um, armholes for set in sleeves or a certain sort of shoulder width. I'm more concerned about just what the bust size overall is for me. I'm also a little bit concerned just because I'm a larger lady. I want to make sure that it's not going to be super tight around my hips. Now I know that my hips are 55 inches. So the 59 and the 55, I'm still within a nice range as far as size down at my hips. It's not gonna be super tight. So I'm still comfortable with the 2X size. Now, you might be out there and say, you know what, that's still a little snug for me. I want, it, I want this thing oversized. You could decide to go up a size. You could do whatever you want. But the point here is you need to know what your bust size is. So the best thing you could do is grab a tape measure. I have a tape measure here, let me grab one. 
And it is always better if you have somebody else do this. So whether it's a friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever it is, take your tape measure and go around your bust and hit at the fullest part of your bust and measure that, okay? That's where I'm the 52 is. When I go around my entire bust and I measure it all the way around, I am 52 inches at my fullest bust point, okay? So that's what I want you to have that information first. Once you have that information, then you can come down here and you can start taking a look and you could decide, okay, do I want my finished size to be closer to my bust size or do I want to keep with the 10 inches of positive ease as it's supposed to be? You just make the decision and, and go with it, okay? Once you make that decision, I want you to grab a highlighter and I want you to highlight the number that pertains to you. So, for example, when you're looking at patterns like this, you'll notice there is a size outside of the parentheses and then there are multiples of different sizes inside the parentheses. So for me, the 2X, as I mentioned, it's the one, two, three, fourth number inside the parentheses. And that's important because whenever I come down to the regular pattern and it has a multiple of numbers like this, I know that the one, two, three, fourth number inside the parentheses, whenever I come up to a pattern like this, is the number that I want to deal with. The reason I want you to highlight that number, and those of you who need the centimeters, you can do that as well, is because if you happen to put this down midweek and you come back and you cannot remember what numbers you're using, this allows you to never forget because you have them highlighted now, you know exactly what size you're making and you'll never have a reason to forget what size you're making and accidentally start using the wrong numbers, okay? Don't forget to do it on the length also, one, two, three, four, okay? And that's the first step choosing the right size and make sure you highlight the number. Now I will tell you that Caitlin, you guys know my Caitlin, Caitlin made this sweater and she is a little bit larger than a 34, not a whole lot, and she likes it better at the, with a tighter fit. So she actually would probably need the size large to have a 10 inch ease, but would make the size medium because she likes the way that fits better. So you guys decide which fit you would prefer. I will tell you that I think a lot of you would really like the 10 inches of positive ease because it's not gonna be super tight, it's gonna feel really good, and as long as you're getting gauge, we'll get to that point, you're gonna have a sweater that turns out nice and, and, and feels good, okay? So that's the first thing, you wanna choose the right size for you. The next part we need to talk about is the yarn. And as I told you, I did choose Red Heart's Huga Charm for this sweater, and I chose it for many different reasons. One of the reasons is because it is a size four weight yarn, meaning it's gonna work up relatively quickly and it's a pretty average um, standard sort of weight. A size four, based on the Craft Yarn Council, is a worsted weight yarn. Now the Huga Charm itself is a 97% acrylic, 3% other fiber. And if you take a look, you can kind of see there's that little sparkle to it. That's the other fiber that it's talking about, okay? I will also tell you that the Huga Charm is very lightly spun, okay? So it doesn't, it's not spun really super tight. It's not super loose, but it's not like super springy, okay? See how I, even when I'm pulling on it, it doesn't have a lot of extra stretch. Meaning what you see is what you get as you're knitting with this, okay? And I kind of like that. I also like that it has a little bit of a halo to the yarn, but it's not fuzzy. Plus, I, I mean, not gonna lie, I love the sparkle. I love the hint of sparkle. It's not so much that it's glitzy glammy, but it's just a little hint of sparkle. I thought that this was a beautiful yarn to use for this particular sweater because it makes it so that it's not super hot, super warm, but it should be just enough as you're wearing it. Now I point all of these things out because if you are choosing not to use Huga Charm, you need to make sure you're choosing a yarn that hopefully is the same weight as Huga Charm, so it is a size four, and um, you also wanna be mindful of the fiber of the yarn you're choosing 
and the, uh, the way the yarn you're choosing is constructed. And let me show you why, and that's gonna kinda jump us into the gauge swatches, okay? So let me move this aside, and we're going to jump into the gauge swatches. Um, let's see, I can't really go too far into gauge swatches until I talk about needles, huh? So let me, let me grab some needles real quick. I suggested a size nine needle for this sweater. When I say suggested, what I mean is, I used a size nine needle to get the gauge listed on the sweater. That means that with your yarn choice and the way you knit, you might need a larger needle, you might need a smaller needle. It all depends on the way you knit. Gauge is not a standard. And when I say gauge, that's the number of stitches per inch you get when you make your stockinette fabric, or the, the number of rows you get um, per inch when you make the stockinette fabric. That's con considered gauge. Gauge is not a standard um, equation. It is completely dependent on the yarn you're using, the fiber of that yarn, the needles you're using, the like how tense you are that day, and the way you knit. You could actually use the exact same yarn, exact same needles as I do, and then come up with a completely different gauge because you knit differently than I do. That's why doing a gauge swatch is so important because you need to make sure that whatever yarn you're going to use for this pattern, that you are using the right size needles to get the same gauge that I got because I use those gauge numbers to calculate all of the instructions for this sweater. So in order for me to make sure that I get that 59 inch bust, I need to make sure I get that same gauge as is listed in the pattern, which happens to be 16 stitches and 22 rows, okay? So that's my note about needles. So make sure you have some needles around. The other note is you wanna make sure that you are gonna do your gauge swatch with the actual needles you will use on your project, okay? So if I plan on using these needles on my project, I wanna make sure I do my gauge swatch with them. I don't wanna use a pair of wooden needles or bamboo needles if I'm gonna use metal for the project, okay? That's very important. All right, now we can jump to gauge swatches. So I have done the work for you and I have swatched up several different yarns to show you how they look with this, this particular needle and some stockinette stitch and the ribbing we use for the pattern, so on and so forth. And I wanna talk to you about these, okay? This gray one over here, this is Huga Charm, and I used these size nine needles and I worked up a gauge swatch using this Huga Charm, okay? So we talked about this yarn already, how it works up. It has seven little strands worked up into each, up each in, not in each, let me set it this way. It has seven strands spun together to make up this yarn. And this is, this is the fabric I get when I work up stockinette stitch in this fabric, okay? This is Super Saver. Super Saver is also a size four weight yarn. It has four plies of yarn that are spun together. And you can see just based on these two, they're the same number of stitches. They aren't the same number of rows. They're the same number of stitches. And there is a difference there, right? Look at the fabric itself. This one is a little bit looser. It looks really, you know, it's just, it's kind of nice. This one is much more snug. It has a lot more elasticity. Even the ribbing part has a lot more elasticity to it. It just looks a little bit more compact. And as I put them on top of each other, you can definitely see there is a size difference, okay? Can you see that? So these are both size four weight yarns, but one is not like the other. So you wanna make sure that you're using a yarn that's gonna come up just like this fabric if you want your, your sweater to turn out like this, okay? So this is Super Saver. This one here, again, it's the same number of stitches wide, and this is With Love Stripes. You can see it's very similar to Super Saver in the way it's a little bit tighter, but the With Love Stripes is even more snug than the Super Saver is. It really came together, like you can see there's a lot of spring back to that. And I just, I mean, that's really great if that's what the look you're going for, but it's not the drapey. See how this one's really flexible, really drapey. I can't, <laughs> look, I mean this one, 
it just bounces right back to its same size. This one, I mean, it still wants to crumble up and it's it has a lot more or flexibility to it than the With Love Stripes. But this is a size four weight yarn. I used the same needles to make both of these swatches. They have the same number of stitches and you can see it's, it's a different fabric. It knits up differently, okay? Let's see here. Let's bring in this one next. This one here, this is Red Hearts Amore. So this is Red Hearts Amore yarn, okay? This one is Huga Charm, Huga Charm and Amore. So the Amore yarn, it's a little bit, the fabric is not quite as springy as the With Love, right? It's not quite like that. It has a little bit more like, a little drape to it. It has a little bit, like definitely has more drape to it. It has a lot of drape really similar to the charm. It still is a little bit, a little bit tighter stitches, a tighter weave. Can you see that? Um, I like how the ribbing bit looks down here. I actually like that better than this. I like how it doesn't really pull in on itself. And the, the Amora yarn has a chainette construction. So the yarn itself is really soft. Um, it's 100% polyester, so it's not acrylic, it's polyester, has a little bit of a, it's not fuzz, it's soft, I don't know how to explain it, it's just very soft, but it is a chain at construction, so they're not spun together, they're like chained together, which allows for this really great beautiful texture, okay? So this is, this is a nice fabric, this would be very beautiful, it would be very warm, um, cause polyester does not breathe. Acrylic doesn't breathe a whole lot either, either, but I think the stitches, the openness of the stitches here, um, allow for a little bit more breathing room, but this is really pretty. Again, it's a size four weight yarn, same number of stitches, same needle. Look at that. Okay. So it was, it would be definitely, you'd have to adjust so many things or I'd have to get up a se several different size needles to make this bigger to get it to this size, okay? The last swatch I made up is, uh, this is Chic Sheep, so this is my own yarn line. So this is Chic Sheep, this is 100% washable merino wool. And again, it's the same number of stitches, but you can really see the springiness here. You see that, how it really springs back? And look how the wool really pulls in with the ribbing bit down here. It also is a lot more snug than the other. I mean, look at that, holy moly, that is a huge difference. Again, I knit it on the same needles, and I tend to knit this one because of the nature of the yarn itself. Let's take a look at this one real quick. This is very springy, okay? Let me pull this out some more. Can you see how much bounce this one has? There's so much bounce and springy, springiness to the Chic Sheep yarn, which allows, as you're knitting, you have some spring to it, and so it really pulls in those stitches. So I tend to knit a little bit more tight, or tighter, a little bit tighter, when I'm knitting with Chic Sheep. So this is my pre-blocked swatch with Chic Sheep. Again, same number of stitches, but I get a completely different look. Why am I showing you all of these gauge swatches with different yarns? The reason is I want you to understand that even though their symbols are all size fours and I use the same size needle and I'm the one that knit all of them, they all knit up differently because the yarn is different for all of them. So my point here is if you're not using the Huga Charm yarn and you're choosing a different yarn, make sure as you're working your gauge swatch, make sure you like the fabric that you are getting. If it's really tight and crisp like this one, you're not going to get a sweater that's really fluid and, and has a lot of um, bounce and fluidness, I don't know how else to say it, um, with a fabric that's like this, it's going to be a lot more sto uh, stoic and solid, okay? So when you're working on your gauge swatch, that's something you really need to pay attention to, especially if you're changing uh, the yarn of choice for this project, okay? When you have chosen your yarn, we're going to focus here on the Huga Charm here for a second. When you've chosen your yarn and you have grabbed your needles and you worked up a gauge swatch, which I have written in the week one instructions. I've written out a specific uh, gauge swatch instructions for you, so I want you to do that so that you can make this swatch right here. 
Once you've made this swatch up, I want you to go ahead and measure it out. So I like to use one of these really great knit checks, okay, because it has this nice opening right here and it makes it easy for me to count stitches and count rows. So what you could do, let me grab a little something here to help you out. I'm gonna grab a blocking board. You could take your swatch and you could lay it out. Don't overstretch it. Don't do anything like super overkill on it, so to speak, and just block it so that it stays in place for you. Okay, so we're just gonna block it to stay in place. This isn't like actual blocking. I'm just popping it down so I can see what the stitches look like and they aren't moving around on me. Okay, see what I mean? Now, I wrote in the, the pattern itself that you could go, you could take a ruler and you can measure out four inches. So if I took from there and went to four inches and put a pin in, so that way I could see, okay, that's four inches. And then put a pin right there, that's four inches. And then did the same for this direction. I didn't quite go four inches, but we're gonna say this is three inches, okay? And then I could come this direction, one, two, three. There's three inches. And so now we have like a, we have a four by three inch area that we could measure, okay? So you could do that and you could take your tape measure and start measuring how many stitches you have over that space, all right? So if you don't have a knit check, you could do that. What I like to do, because I have this knit check, which is super easy to use, I love it, it's available at almost all big box stores that I know of. You set this on your fabric and you line up, I'm gonna use a pencil to point, you line up the rows and the stitches within this little box here. And within this box, I can now count. So if I'm looking at the V's, can you see the V's? So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a half, all right? I know that I probably have eight, I've probably stretched it out a little bit here, but let's do this one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I knew I had eight, I had done eight before. So I have eight stitches over two inches. Well, if I multiply that by two to get my four inches, I have 16 stitches over my four inches. I can count my rows now as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 rows. 11 times two is 22 and I have 22 rows. So that's where my gauge is 16 stitches over four inches and 22 rows over four inches. You with me so far? So this is how you would measure your gauge. And this is a pre-blocked gauge and I'm gonna go over that here in a second. I didn't give you a gauge for the ribbing bits, but I wanted you to get used to the ribbing sections before we jump into the big pattern. That's why I had you do the um, ribbing bits on your gauge swatch, okay? Because I want you to, to practice with these stitches before we go into a big pattern with them, okay? The ribbing down here, the one that is a three by two, so it's three knits by two purls. This is the bottom ribbing that we do, and there's actually a vent in the pattern Pattern, so we'll talk about that next week when we get to that um, so that it doesn't pull in and cling to your lower body and at the top of the pattern near the, the the neckline that's where we do this stitch pattern that's why I wanted you to practice that but this is the gauge swatch okay again follow the instructions that are written in the pattern the link is in the video description box below once you've completed your gauge swatch measure it if you find that your gauge is too big, meaning maybe you're getting too many stitches for in the four inches, that means your stitches are too small. Sounds funny, right? But if instead of 16 stitches, you're getting 18 stitches, that means your stitch, your needles are, um, are, 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 you, you, blah, 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 blah. you need bigger needles so that way you get bigger stitches. Okay, let me say that one more time. If you are getting more stitches in that four inches than what you need, you need to use bigger needles. If you're getting fewer stitches in those four inches than what you need, you need to use smaller needles. So if you have more stitches, you want bigger needles. If you have fewer stitches, you want smaller needles. 
So you have to do another gauge swatch. Now, because you've already done a gauge swatch with this yarn, I do not want you to pull it out and do another one. I want you just to set this aside, let it set aside, tag it in some way to let you know what size needles you used with it, and just set it aside. Use your yarn, use yarn you haven't used yet, and do another gauge swatch. The reason I want you to do that is because you have already used this yarn. You've stretched it, you've manipulated it, and you could actually get a, um, an untruthful gauge if you reuse this yarn right now. So I don't want you to reuse this. You would set this aside, grab your yarn, and do another gauge swatch, okay? Now, the reason I keep mentioning about pre-blocked gauge is because if you're using a yarn like a wool yarn or a cotton yarn, it's really important that we also know what your post-block gauge is because it tends to be that cotton yarn especially will start to stretch um, after it has been washed a couple times, right? It'll start to grow. Or wool yarn, it might actually completely react differently after it's washed. It might look completely different than what your original swatch looked like. Let me tell you a little story. Way back years ago, I was using um, a mink and cashmere yarn. And when I got it off of the ball, it looked like this, okay? It looked like a regular old, worsted weight yarn, no big deal, nothing going on. I knit up a little sample swatch so that I could see what was going on with it. Knit it up, then I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it a bath. I, I put it in a, a sink, I added a little wool wash to it. I noticed the bath was a little bit dirty, but I figured, ah, it's all right. It had um, been uh, handled quite a bit, right? So I finished washing it, I took it out, I dried it, I pinned it out, and I left it. When I came back to look at the dried swatch, no longer did I have a little swatch that was nice and clean and like not, like just was really smooth like this. It was furry. I'm talking like Yeti furry. So if I had made the shrug that I planned on making for myself out of that yarn before I did a gauge swatch, I would have looked like a Sasquatch when all was said and done. And I would have never known until I washed my shrug. So if you're gonna be making something, especially something you're gonna wear, you wanna make sure that you like that fabric that you're using after it's been washed because at some point you're gonna wash this sweater. So it's best to use this swatch as it's your testing tool, right? You've swatched the yarn to test the yarn. You've used needles to test the needles. Now you've measured this gauge swatch. Now you wanna make sure that this fabric after it's washed is what you, what you like, is what you want. So if you're using a wool or a cotton or a yarn that you've never used before, you have no idea what it's gonna look like, I highly recommend washing and blocking your swatch. So that way you can see, does it grow? Does it get fuzzy? Do I even like the fabric after it's washed? Is it gonna get pilly? Is it, is it gross? I mean, you don't know these things until you do this step. And it's much better to do that step on this little swatch than on that big one, right? So that's why I want you to wash and block if you're using a yarn you've never used before, just so that you can make sure you like the way it looks. So let me show you how that's done now. All right, so I have all of my swatches here and these ones are all acrylic and this one is polyester. So doing a wash and block on these is really not gonna make much of a difference because you can't really wash and block acrylic. It doesn't really do much. So I'm gonna set those aside and we're gonna focus on the Chic Sheep swatch. Now, if you remember, Chic Sheep is 100% merino wool and it's washable wool, okay? It's a size four yarn um, and it comes in 24 beautiful colors. I just had to throw that out there. I'm also using some Eucalyn Wool Wash. This is uh, Rapture. This is the one designed by Kristen Omdahl, who's a wonderful designer and a good friend of mine. Along with the Rapture, I have a basin here that I can use to demonstrate how to do this here with you, but you could do this in a sink. You don't have to do it on a something separate like this. And some room temperature water. So I'm gonna pour the water in here. I don't need a whole lot because we're just doing a little tiny swatch. And then I'm gonna pour a little bit of the wool wash in. And this Rapture smells so good, you guys. I wish you could smell it through the, through the video because it's great. I'm just gonna get it around a little bit, okay? And I will take my swatch, right, just like this, and drop it in. And I wanna make sure that it gets completely saturated, all right? Make sure it gets completely saturated here. 
Remember that this yarn has been handled at the store. I mean, I know how many of us pick up yarn and rub it in our, our, our hands, rub it along our faces to make sure we like the way it feels. Um, it's been handled at the mill. It's been handled through the dyeing process. I mean, it has been through the ringer. So giving your swatch a little bit of a bath, it's like it's a spa day for it. So you really wanna make sure you give it a nice bath, okay? You can even see here, it was a nice um, clean swatch, but I have, look, it's a little bit, a little bit dirty in there. And it's just, that's natural. It's just the way it is, okay? Once you have washed your swatch, this is a no rinse wool wash, so I don't have to rinse it. I want to go ahead and try and squeeze out as much of the water as I possibly can from my swatch. Okay, usually I have a towel here to help me out, but I forgot one, so I don't have one. But you could wrap this up in a towel to dry it a little bit more if you wanted to, but I don't need to, so I'm gonna set this down. I have this lovely little swatch, and here at the start, you can already see it's relaxed quite a bit, right? It's not as springy and sprung up as it was, so it has already relaxed. Oh, it smells so good with that rapture. Um, all I wanna do here now is I don't wanna overstretch it. I still wanna make sure I'm getting the fabric that I want. When I say overstretch, I don't wanna go like this, right? And start pinning it out. Cause that's gonna give, it's not gonna give me a really true gauge. I just want the stitches to look like normal stitches, really just comfortable. And then I'm just gonna pin it, okay? This is how you would do just a basic gauge swatch when you're washing and blocking it. If this was a sweater, we would be stretching it out to the size of the sweater schematic, but for the swatch, we want it to be the size that it's comfortable, right? So that way we can measure it and let it be comfortable. So now that I've pinned it out, all I would do is I would just let it dry. I could even just let that bottom part kind of come in a little bit, because those are, that is ribbing. So I'm gonna let that come in a little bit there. And all I wanna do now is just let this dry. Once your swatch is dry, you will then unpin it, let it relax for a little bit, and you will measure it again. This will now be your post block measurement. Now, why is it important that you have a pre block measurement and a post block measurement? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> you need to know that your fabric is either going to grow or stay the same or even shrink after it is washed. Let me put this another way. In your pre-block, your fabric was 16 stitches to four inches. You're like, fantastic, I'm right on gauge, everything's looking good. But Marley said I should probably do a blocked gauge just to see if anything changes. So you did it, you did it, you did a blocked gauge. After the blocked gauge, when you measured it after it was all dry, you found out that your fabric grew to 14 stitches over four inches. That's two extra stitches every four inches. When you multiply that by the number of stitches you have around your sweater, your sweater just grew a whole lot and it's no longer going to fit the size you want it to fit, right? That's why it's so important to find that out before you put all of that work into making a sweater. These little swatches, they are a huge tool that way too many knitters skip because they wanna get right to the action. Look, I understand. I like to get right to the knitting as well, but I also really like it when I don't spend six weeks making a sweater that doesn't fit, right? So that's why it's so important that you do these gauge swatches. You wanna make sure, based on this little tiny piece of fabric, and it is little tiny in rel relative to the sweater, right? that you actually like the fabric you're going to create. So if you've changed the yarn, please do a gauge swatch. Make sure you like that fabric and make sure you find the right size needle to get you the gauge listed on the pattern. And if you've never used this yarn before, whatever it is you're using, make sure you wash it and pin it out to see what it's gonna look like because nobody lets other people look like Sasquatches, right? Because that just wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even going to be like a pretty Sasquatch. It was like a bright pink Sasquatch. It wasn't good. 
Anyways, I hope this video has been helpful here for week one. I know it's a lot of talking, a lot of demonstrating, but this is important for you to be able to move on and make a sweater starting the next five weeks. Can you believe we're gonna spend five weeks together? We're gonna make a sweater, but we can do this. I'm excited and I know you are too. Make sure you are part of that Facebook group so that way you can be encouraged or encourage others and have a possibility of winning prizes. If you make this sweater, please tag us on social media. I'm Marley Bird, just about everywhere, but if you use hashtag Marley Bird, I will find this project. Or if you do Marley Bird K-A-L, Marley Bird Cal, I'll be sure to smash your like button as well. Okay guys, that's it for me for week one. I will be looking forward to seeing your gauge swatches out there and seeing what yarn you choose. And then we will get started on week two in the next video. Love ya, bye. All right, I'm serious you guys, don't hesitate. Make that gauge swatch. While you're making the gate swatch, why don't you just spend some time watching some of these other videos I've picked out for you, okay? Make sure you smash that like button.